Well, wholesale inflation heating up again last month. A new PPI report showing prices for wholesalers up 2.1 percent year over year. This after yet another hot consumer inflation read yesterday. With me now to discuss is former Home Depot CEO Bob Nardelli and Forbes Media Chairman and Steve Forbes all here today. Great to see you. Good to see you both. Bob, mm -hmm. first to you, your reaction to the wholesale inflation report. Yeah, David, uh, it's great to be with you, and especially my good friend there, Steve. Um, I, I'm not surprised. At, <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. I've, I've been seeing several, several uh, months now that there's a long tail on this inflation, and we're starting to see that take place right now, David. I mean, uh, personally, when you look at uh, home insurance, for example, uh, mine went up nine, ten percent. If you can even get it, if you think about uh, all of the other issues that are driving inflation. We just heard Larry talk about one that's dear, near and dear to my heart is this EV, what we're spending on something that the consumers don't want. We look at the uh, repair of automobiles. Well, it's not surprising. There's 278 million vehicles on the road in the U.S. And, David, the average age is 12.5 years. That's up a point and a half over the past four or five years. So the people that are really uh, doing well on the revenue side are the auto repair stores like uh, O'Reilly and so forth. So every Everywhere you look, there's the tale of inflation continues to haunt us, and it will continue to haunt us now with oil prices going back up again, the cost of fuel. And when you look at core CPI, of course, it takes out the most important things, fuel and food, right, which are fundamental. Right, exactly. So we're, 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 we're today. And Steve, let's talk about food. The, the worst thing about the inflation tax is that it's so regressive. It hurts most the people ca who can afford it least. The, the lower 20 percent of Americans are now paying over 25 percent of their salary on food. 25 percent of their entire salary is on food. That leaves them with precious little else. Well, the whole thing about food for, as you know, for over a century is that it's become a smaller and smaller part of people's budgets. So what they've done is reverse a centuries long trend. And as you say, it hurts the people with the least. Now, let's remind ourselves whose wages went up most when a certain individual was in the occupying, occupying the Oval Office a few years ago. It was lower income people were starting to rise up. Right. Now they're stopping in the water. How is it these people who call themselves tribunes of the poor end up harming them? Yeah. And, and Bob, you mentioned housing before, house insurance. But just buying a house is, is close to impossible now. You, you compare it to when President Biden came in uh, and the costs for monthly payments because of the prices, not only the prices of house going up, but the prices of mortgages going up to close to 7 percent now on a 30 year mortgage has doubled, literally doubled the monthly principal and interest payments from one thousand dollars a month in January 2021 to two thousand dollars in February 2024. And, and of course, the, the number of houses being sold are way down to two million more than two million less. This is really hurting the American dream. Yeah, there's no question, David, the American dream is gone, certainly for the younger generation who aspired to be able to buy a home, have a backyard, and enjoy the same standard of living that they did when they were growing up with their parents. But that inflation rate and, and that Fed rate not only is hurting housing, it's hurting rent, but it's hurting the auto industry, too, you know, having spent many years at Chrysler. And when you look at the FICA score necessary and the interest rates, again, it's no wonder people are keeping their automobiles much longer. Not only they don't want EVs, but they can't afford to get into a new automobile, so they're preserving what they have. So we see this, again, it's, it's plentiful across almost everything we deal with today. David, I deal with big companies, Fortune 50 down the middle and lower middle market. Interest rates in some cases have gone from 2 million to 12 million with one company I deal. Basically, all free cash flow is going to pay interest. They can't do R&D, they can't expand. And then you look at 40% wage increase, and that's just rolling through the organization. I saw Stellantis laid off, you know, thousands of white collar people to try and yeah. offset the yeah. inflationary rate of the labor workers. Yeah, and then uh, Steve, you have the, the the president responding with with made up numbers. This this false view of of the way the world works, or particularly the way the United States is working now. Uh, you've heard it before. I got to play it again. What he said about inflation yesterday. Roll tape.
Well, I do stand by my prediction that before the year is out to be a rate cut. This may delay it a month or so. I'm not sure of that. I don't, we don't know what the Fed is going to do for certain. But look, we have dramatically reduced inflation from 9% down to close to 3%. We're in a situation where we're better situated than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing. And we have a plan to deal with it. So, so he's claiming that inflation was skyrocketing when he first came in, which, of course, is not true. It was 1.4 percent. It is now more than twice that, at 3.5 to 3.8 percent. Uh, but that first part where he was talking about the Fed, could it be that, that Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, will do what Arthur Burns did for Richard Nixon for his reelection, that is giving, giving the economy a false boost by, by lowering rates? Uh, I think he'll be tempted to, but I think uh, the very fact that you're calling him out on it, others are calling him out on it, he's going to be hard put to do it if it looks like these numbers are staying up. And by the way, the president double lied on that. He made it sound like inflation was at 9 percent when he took office. As you say, it was well under 2 percent. And the other thing is, these numbers, as Larry Summers, former Treasury Secretary, under a Democrat, right. he's a Democrat himself, right. has pointed out that these price indexes leave out interest rates. Yeah. So if you put in uh, interest rates on mortgages, car payments, credit card payments, he calculated and other economists calculated the height was not 9 percent, it was 18 wow. percent. It's not the 3 percent he's citing today, President Biden. It's actually 7 percent. So they're fibbing about the whole numbers but, and they're fibbing about everything else. Bob, we got to make it quick because you only got about 15 seconds. But the American, you know the American consumer very well. You've dealt with them in many different products that you've sold. They're not buying this, are they? Yeah. They are not buying it. And we're seeing it in every corner. I mean, we're seeing people shift in these polls are definitely <laughs> moving away from this Bidenomics thing. But let me say one other point, David. You know, they're not going to lower rates in May based on the April numbers. Then they really only have June, July. August is out, September. They only have three more board meetings before they, they can't right. do something in October, right before the election. They just cannot. Well, let's let's pray they cannot. Uh, Arthur, remember Arthur Burns. Uh, he said he couldn't do it either. Bob Nardelli and Steve Forbes, good to see you both. Thank you Thank very you. much. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.